Hi, I'm Jackie from ieltsjackie.com. Welcome to my video on how to answer sentence completion questions. This is a common type of question in the IELTS reading test, but as long as you have a good strategy to answer them and have done some practice questions before the exam, they shouldn't give you too much of a problem. I've created this video to help you with your preparation. It includes an explanation of this question type, the skills needed, key tips, a proven strategy and step-by-step -step instructions on how to answer a real test question. For this type of question, you'll be given a set of four or five sentences with gaps in them. You're required to fill in the gaps with appropriate words to complete the meaning of the sentence. The instructions will tell you whether you have to use words taken from the reading text or if you can use different ones, that is synonyms. The instructions will also state how many words you're allowed to use to fill the gap. Read them very carefully. They will most likely tell you to use one word only or no more than two words. If you use the wrong number of words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you've given is correct. Here's an example of instructions taken from a past test paper. In this case, you can only use one word for your answer, and it must come from the text. Sentence completion questions test your ability in a range of reading skills. You need to be able to identify synonyms, understand paraphrasing, scan for specific information, and read in detail for meaning. You need a good knowledge and understanding of synonyms and paraphrasing for all IELTS reading questions, but they're particularly important in sentence completion questions. Here's a quick reminder of what each of them is. Synonyms are words that mean exactly or nearly the same as a given word. For example, for the word true, you could also use genuine, accurate, factual or correct. Paraphrasing is saying the same thing in different ways, using different words and or a different sentence structure. For example, the new restaurant was small and cosy and the food excellent. Or you could say, the cuisine served in the new eatery was superb and the atmosphere intimate. You'll notice that the paraphrased sentence B contains a number of synonyms as well as being structured in a different way to the original sentence. These synonyms have been used. Restaurant for eatery, small and cosy for intimate, food for cuisine and excellent for superb. Now for some top tips. Tip 1. Read the instructions carefully to find out how many words you should write for the answer and also if you have to use the exact words from the text or can use synonyms. Tip 2. Read the sentences before you read the text. It's a waste of time reading the passage first as you don't know what information you'll be looking for until you've read and understood the sentences. Tip 3. The answers appear in the same order in the text as the order of the list of incomplete sentences. Tip 4. The completed sentences must be grammatically correct. If they aren't, then you have the wrong answers. Tip 5. When first studying the sentences, try to work out what type of word is missing. For example, a noun, a verb, an adjective or an adverb. This will help you to find it more quickly. Tip 6. Scan the text to find the location of the answer, then read in detail to find the answer itself. And tip 7. Always be thinking about synonyms and paraphrasing. Look for matching meaning rather than exact word matches when comparing the information in the sentences and the text. It's now time to look at my step-by-step -step strategy. I'll show you how to apply this strategy when we work through the question, but first you need to understand it. Carefully read the instructions, then read the sentences with the gaps in. Try to understand what they mean. 
As you do this, try to predict the type of word that's missing. For example, a noun, verb, adjective or adverb. Occasionally, you may even be able to guess the missing word. Next, underline key words to scan for in the text. Include names, numbers, dates and places if there are any, as these will be easy to spot. Think about possible synonyms as you do this. Now scan the text for the keywords in the first sentence. It's important that you start with this one, even if you think some of the other sentences will be easier to complete. Remember, the answers will come in order in the text, so it'll be much easier and quicker if you search for them in order. Finding the key words will show you where the answer is located. You then need to read that part of the text in detail to find the actual answer. The text will probably paraphrase the incomplete sentence, so you'll need to interpret what it means to find the correct match of information. When you've found the answer, fill in the answer sheet and do check that the sentence is grammatically correct and that your spelling is correct. Repeat this process with the next sentence and so on until you've completed them all. If there's a sentence you're really struggling with, Take a guess at the missing word and move on. If you waste too much time trying to get this one mark, you'll run out of time and miss out on easier marks later on. We're now ready to work on our sample question. It comes from a real IELTS reading test paper and can be found on the official IELTS website www.ielts.org. Here are the instructions and incomplete sentences. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space, but I've put a link to a PDF of the question in the notes below this video that you can download to make it easier to work on. Here's the text. This passage is just a part of the full text used in the exam. In the real test, a longer version appeared and it had several different types of questions set on it. You don't need to read the text yet as we have to do some work on the sentences first. Now I'll show you step by step how I answer this question. First, I read the instructions and note that I must write no more than two words for each answer and that I must choose the words from the text. Then I read the three sentences, 38 to 40, carefully and try to understand what they mean. I predict that all the missing words will be nouns because they're preceded by an article word, the. I also highlight key words and think about possible synonyms for them. I now scan the text for the key words I've chosen in the first sentence, which is question 38 in this test. I start with von Frisch, as this will be easy to find. Indeed, I spot it right at the beginning of the text. I now scan for my other keywords, which will tell me if the answer is here or if I need to scan further on. I find them in this paragraph as well, so I know that this is the right location. I go back and reread sentence 38 again to find more clues as to the answer I'm looking for. It says that von Frisch is changing the position of something, so I scan the paragraph again looking for the word changing or one that means a similar thing. There is both use of synonyms and paraphrasing here and the only word I can see that clearly indicates that von Frisch has done something different is moving. What did he move? The feeding dish. I go back to sentence 38 to check if this word is a good fit. It is. It makes sense gives the sentence the same meaning as the text, is grammatically correct and is the right number of words. I have my first answer, feeding dish. It's easy to panic if the answer is hidden in paraphrasing. If you stay calm and work with the clues you do have, you'll be able to identify the answer. I now scan for the key words in sentence 39, which are dance, hive, and direction. Note that the word hive has an asterisk beside it 
and as an explanation of the meaning of it underneath the text. You'll sometimes be given the meaning of an unusual keyword that's vital to the understanding of the text. Since the answers come in order in the text, I ignore the text above the previous answer and start scanning from the next paragraph. I find a section of text where dance, hive and direction, or close matches, all occur close together several times, so I guess this is the best place to look for the answer. I read sentence 39 again to make sure that I fully understand it and know what I need to find out. I need to find out which direction the dance is pointing in. I return to the section of text and read in detail. I spot the phrase, the direction of the food in relation to the sun. This is too many words to be my answer, so I identify the key word as food. I check back to see if it's a good fit for the gap in the sentence. It is. It makes sense, gives the sentence the same meaning as the text, is grammatically correct, and it's the right number of words. I have the second answer, food. I now go to the final sentence and scan for the key words I've selected. Food, vertical and angle. I find food and related word feeding and vertical in a section of the last paragraph. I can't find angle, but I do spot 40 degrees, which I know is a specific angle. This must be the right location. I read sentence 40 again. It's not easy to understand. If you didn't know the meaning of the word vertical, it would be even harder. However, you don't always need to understand all the key words. Use them to find the location of the answer in the text, then work with what you do understand to find the missing word. I don't waste time trying to fully understand the sentence, but focus on the few words immediately before the gap. These tell me what the missing word relates to. The phrase is about direction again, the direction of the food from something. I go back to the text and read in detail for a phrase that relates to direction. I find three. The direction of the food in relation to the sun. The feeding place is in the same direction as the sun. And the feeding place is 40 degrees to the left of the sun. The main idea in all of these phrases is the relationship between the food and the direction of the sun. So, the answer must be sun. I make sure that it's a good fit for the sentence and fill it in on the answer sheet. Now, all the answers are complete. I hope you found these step-by-step -step instructions helpful. The best thing you can do now is to use them to practice answering sentence completion questions from past reading test papers. This will quickly improve both your skills and your level of confidence. Thank you for watching. You'll find lots more help with the IELTS reading test, including step-by-step -step instructions on how to answer the other types of reading questions in my other videos and on my website ieltsjackie.com. There's a link to the website in the notes below this video. I look forward to seeing you there. Goodbye for now.